I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. A signal from outer space has a scientist here on Earth baffled. Yes, scientists baffled. This is the first time astronomers have detected patterned signals known as fast radio burst, or FRBS. While some believe those could derive from natural causes, others, of course, are arguing there's intelligent life could be behind those sources. Well, talking about intelligent life, I have to bring in one of the most intelligent life that I know up north. Alex Mihalovich joined us in Toronto with more. Alex, you know, yesterday we had you talking about an asteroid coming to us. Now we're going to talk about signals coming from space. I'm just glad that I, I have an expert that can continue to explain this to me. What makes these signals so special from things that we've heard of in the past? Well, if I wasn't an expert in the past, I'm quickly becoming one on these type of things. So look, th this is what's happening. This is actually very, very interesting. And it's coming from a galaxy far, far away, this signal. And when I say far, far away, I mean 500 million light years all the way to Earth. Now, what makes this really special is that it's a sustained signal coming in at intervals that are basically timed. So this is not like anything we've seen in the past. It's actually a Canadian organization that first detected this. So what we're seeing is a sustained signal coming in in 16 day intervals, four days on, 12 days off. So that's why everybody's saying like, this is something like we've never seen before, 500 million light years away. So very interesting. And it's piquing the curiosity of scientists, obviously. Well, and what could this be, do you think? Is it surreal to kind of think that aliens are, might actually be trying to contact us? Oh, well, right now we're saying that this is pretty much unknown. So you have some theorists saying it's coming from a black hole, from a, a region around a black hole. And other theorists are saying that, you know what, uh, it could be a sun out there that is basically sending out these FSBs, these sound bursts or these radio bursts. But then you have the whole other part of the equation where you have a group of scientists from around the world, mostly Canadians and Americans, and they put out this message. They say, our results suggest a mechanism for periodic modulation either of the burst emission itself or through external amplification or absorption and disfavor models invoking purely sporadic process. So all that lingo, what does that mean? They're saying this is something mechanical. This is something that is not natural. And there's a Harvard professor by the name of Avi Loeb who backs this up. And he's saying that along the exact same lines, he's saying an artificial origin is worth contemplating and checking. That's what he's saying, that this might be an artificial origin. And along with his uh, colleague, Professor Manasavi, or Man. Man Manasvi Lingam, uh, difficult name to pronounce, but I got it there. They're saying that uh, if these signals exist, that it could be like really need something to, we should be looking into it. But on top of that, that they're theorizing it, that it could belong to a spacecraft that would be about 20 times the size of what we know as cruise ships here on Earth. And meaning that would mean that it's big enough to carry living passengers across interstellar or even intergalactic distances. Now, as we just mentioned, these are theories that are out there. But the bottom line and what's interesting here is that pretty much there is a consensus here, at least amongst these professors, that this is something mechanical. So it's something made by something other than being natural, which means we might not be alone there, Scotty. There might be others like us or even smarter than us out there in the universe. Could an alien deception be the strong delusion God sends on an unbelieving and unrepentant world in the last days? Recently, interest has been rising in the theory that an alien deception will be part of the end times. Odd as it may seem, this theory is entirely plausible from a Christian perspective. Although the Bible gives us no word about whether or not aliens exist, there is no inclusion of them in the creation account in Genesis, and no mention of them elsewhere. The Bible does tell us about visitors from another world, the spiritual world, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. According to a National Geographic survey, 77% of all Americans believe there are signs that aliens have visited Earth. According to a recent Harris poll, only 68% of all Americans believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God. 
That means that the number of Americans that believe that UFOs have visited us is now greater than the number of Americans that believe what the Bible has to say about Jesus Christ. With each passing year, the frequency of UFO sightings seems to keep increasing, as does the number of movies, television shows, and video games featuring aliens and extraterrestrial life. It is almost as if the population of the planet is being primed for something. Could this phenomenon be the strong delusion of the last days that is talked about in the Bible? 2 Thessalonians 2 9 through 12. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Why is God sending a strong delusion? The Bible makes it clear. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Simply put, God sends a strong delusion to those who choose not to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah puts it succinctly, Just as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions, and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. The rapture is a familiar concept to most Christians and non-Christians alike. While they may not believe it, and they may even laugh at it, many non-Christians know that all the Christians believe that they are supposed to somehow disappear before the end of the world. Satan would seem to have a problem. How would he be able to explain away the fact that every person who was a Christian has suddenly disappeared? It would seem like a huge wake-up call to the world that the Christians were right after all. It is becoming more and more clear what Satan's solution to this dilemma is. He will answer this preposterous idea, the rapture, with another preposterous idea, an alien deception. When thinking of the peculiar things of the world, the New Age movement tends to come to mind. Psychics, mantras, astrology, and crystals are some of the symbols of this diverse group of the extremely spiritually deceived. Another topic that has always interested New Agers has been UFOs and extraterrestrials. In the past, the idea that UFOs were real was relegated to the fringe. In recent years, however, several scientists have come to the conclusion that extraterrestrials are statistically probable. One of the leading astrophysicists, Stephen Hawking, states that aliens are real and possibly dangerous. Christians must deal with this from a biblical worldview and not be caught up in the deception that UFOs are anything but agents of the prince of the power of the air, aka Satan. God is very real, angels are very real, and the enemy is also very real. In an article by a former New Age participant, Jim Sales describes a prevailing belief among New Agers. Sales describes what Israeli psychic Yuri Geller said, extraterrestrials would not interfere until, in a single night, at the peak of the conflict, they would remove millions of humans who resist this initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness and re-educate them before returning them to Earth a few years later. Another article quotes Barbara Marciniak in her book Bringers of the Dawn as saying, The people who leave the planet during the time of Earth changes do not fit in here any longer, and they are stopping the harmony of the Earth. When the time comes that perhaps 20 million people leave the planet at one time, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining. Geller and Marciniak's quotes sound quite familiar to Christians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18 tells Christians they will disappear from the earth someday. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The source of this information in both cases, Yuri Geller and Barbara Masiniak, is described as being from psychic contact with extraterrestrials. This is not something New Agers have invented. It comes straight from the mind of Satan, disguised as an alien. This has been communicated to them, and will possibly be the explanation for the rapture of the church, i.e., those who do not fit into the earth anymore, those who resist the initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness, the troublemakers. Are you a troublemaker? I hope so. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu is threatening Hamas with the surprise of their lives if the spat of attacks into Israel does not come to an end. But just minutes after his warning, yet another rocket was fired into Israel's south. Netanyahu says that he doesn't want to rush to war, but that the IDF is preparing a dire surprise for Hamas and that it will be different than anything that came before. The last several weeks have seen an increase in rocket and incendiary balloon attacks from the Gaza Strip, and in response, the IDF typically carries out airstrikes on Hamas posts in the coastal enclave. But now Netanyahu says that Israel is ready to take crushing action if need be. Many see the return of rocket fire after several months of calm as a Gazan attempt to pressure Israel into easing or lifting its blockade of the Strip. An Egyptian security delegation visited Gaza earlier this week to convey Netanyahu's request to Hamas, however, for a return to calm. In response, Hamas officials are saying that they are not seeking an escalation, but that the economic pressure that the Gazans are experiencing will create greater pressure on the border. The polar desert of Antarctica is the coldest place on Earth. But its northern peninsula is among the fastest warming regions in the world. Brazilian scientists on Seymour Island off the coast of the peninsula say they've never seen a temperature as high in Antarctica. 20.75 degrees Celsius exceeds 20 degrees for the first time. The island's temperatures are usually far lower, ranging between minus 21 and 1 degrees Celsius. But scientists warn there's not enough data to predict whether it's just an unusual summer weather event. The record appears to be likely associated with what we call a regional Foen event, a rapid warming of air coming down a slope or mountain. Scientists say warming temperatures have caused 9 out of 10 glaciers in the region to shrink. We know that the ice sheet is beginning to lose mass. That mean, means it's melting and that meltwater is contributing to sea level rise. And it's doing that with an accelerating rate. And we expect that to continue. To the southwest of the Seymour Island is the Pine Island Glacier. There, European Space Agency satellite images show an iceberg breaking off this week. It measured more than 300 square kilometres. That's almost the size of Malta, before it shattered into pieces. Climate scientist Mark Drinkwater says, The daily data stream reveals the dramatic pace at which climate is redefining the face of Antarctica. He's among many scientists who warn global warming could melt ice sheets across the South Pole. The Paris Climate Accord, signed by 196 nations in 2015, aim to limit global warming to one and a half degrees rise by the end of the century. But many fear the damage already done may be irreversible. A train carrying deadly chemicals derailed today in eastern Kentucky, setting off a series of fires and spilling toxic fuel into a nearby river. Two people were injured when the CSX train jumped the tracks after slamming into a rock slide caused by torrential rain. It's all part of a severe weather system that is moving across the U.S. From the deep south to the Midwest tonight, rivers in nine states are above flood stage and are now threatening homes and businesses. All of this as an Arctic blast sweeps across much of the country. Tens of millions of Americans could wake up tomorrow to below zero temperatures. Manuel Bohorkas leads off our coverage. This train carrying ethanol derailed in Kentucky this morning, burning for hours after a mud and rock slide along the tracks. That same storm system triggered a mudslide that shut down this West Virginia highway. Severe storms across nine states caused 24 rivers to flood throughout the South. High winds left a trail of destruction in Alabama with twisted metal wrapped around trees. I mean, it's pretty rough. It wasn't just a little gust of wind. Farther north, temperatures plunged across the Midwest. Water mains froze in Des Moines, where it felt like negative 35 degrees. 
In Whiting, Indiana, the wind sent waves over the shoreline of Lake Michigan. It will feel like negative 11 degrees there tomorrow. Over the next 48 hours, 38 million Americans will be at or below zero degrees. The temperature, not so much the concern here along the Florida Panhandle, but the swollen rivers are. The Apalachicola River is way down there, but you can see this road is already impassable, and the river is expected to remain above flood stage well into next week. Jesus declares this in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus tells us in verse 37, when our days parallel the days of Noah, he is returning. One of the things that parallel our days with the days of Noah is the unprecedented flooding the world has been experiencing over the last few years. Jesus goes on to tell us in verses 38 and 39 that when he returns, things will be going on as normal as people will be eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Just as in the days of Noah, when people were caught off guard and the flood came, so also will people of our time be caught off guard when Jesus returns. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12, And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Tonight, disturbing new details are emerging in the death of a young Faye Swetlick in South Carolina. The six-year-old's body was found yesterday, three days after she went missing. Janet Shamley on what we've learned about a man at the center of the investigation. People stopped to leave flowers in Faye Swetlick's neighborhood as authorities identified a neighbor linked to her death. He was not a relative. He was not a friend. He was merely a neighbor. Faye's body was found Thursday in a wooded area near her home. Just moments after locating Faye Marie Swetlick, we located a deceased male. That was Cody Scott Taylor, who lived a few hundred yards from Faye's home, where she was last seen playing outside on Monday. Police previously interviewed Taylor. He had no criminal record. Authorities stopped short of identifying him as the killer. Detectives say the break in the case came as investigators followed a garbage truck around the neighborhood. Are you able to detail the piece of evidence that you found by uh, going behind the trash truck? What I will confirm is this. It was a critical piece of evidence that would have been listed on her missing persons flyer. That flyer details the clothing Faye was wearing when last seen. Vice President Mike Pence was in Charleston and noted her tragic death. I would just urge everyone in South Carolina, hug your kids today and keep this little girl and her family and her community in your prayers. How will this community deal with this tragedy? I think everybody has to process the grief on their own. Pastor Micah Merchant has three children in the same school where Faye was in first grade. Now you'll have to tell them tragic news. How will you explain that? Tragic news is never easy. Uh, nothing prepares you for it. Gonna cry with them. Just gonna be honest. Just gonna cry with them. A lot of broken hearts at a memorial that is growing very quickly here tonight. People, most of them strangers, are coming with things like flowers and balloons, stuffed animals, looking for some way to express profound grief. The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to Timothy, tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, 
and from such people turn away. New video tonight of a knife fight on the subway. It happened on the two train in Brooklyn between a man and a woman. CBS 2's Valerie Castro live in Crown Heights with more on this. Valerie? Christina Maurice, despite what you're about to see on the video, no one was injured during that argument here on the two train, but a woman in the Bronx wasn't so lucky, and now she says she'll never ride the subway again. An argument for reasons unknown on a crowded two train in Crown Heights had all the makings of a knife fight between a man and a woman Wednesday afternoon. A bystander eventually got between the feuding pair while a child in a stroller was seen dangerously close to the scuffle. That's very alarming and um, that's something that we should look at. The argument escalates as the train comes to a stop and it appears the male suspect is actually holding a blade in each hand. The female suspect leaves and in the end, no one was hurt. But a knife also found its way onto a Bronx 6 train in Mott Haven later that night when a young woman was slashed, cut across the head and hand in what bystanders say was an unprovoked attack. You were cut first right here, was first, yes, but then you right. got your hand up, right? My because hand and my face uh, safety and uh, safety and, and uh, knife and attack my hand. 23-year-old Rabia Begum identified her attacker as the man in this video who police are now searching for. The incidents are part of an alarming increase in transit crime. Comparing January and early February this year to the same period last year, there were 263 total crimes system-wide compared to 354 for the same period. That's a 35 percent increase. Riders say they've noticed more issues and it makes them nervous. Yes, it does. I mean, it's, it's not safe. When you have that many people in a small area, public safety is very important. Until a real solution is found, some say they'll avoid mass transit if necessary. When I see people with knives, I'll run. I'm not going to sit next thing I get stopped. No more subway, I'm no go. Tonight, police are still looking for the man who attacked that woman in the Bronx, as well as the man and woman with the knives here on the two train. The city of Parkland, Florida, is holding a moment of silence today to remember the victims of the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. It was two years ago today that a gunman opened fire, killing 17 people. Now, active shooter drills are conducted at nearly every American public school. Vladimir Dutier is here with how the nation's two largest teachers unions want to change the way these drills are carried out. Vlad, good morning. So what do they want to change? That's right, Tony. The National Education Association, the American Federation of Teachers, and the Gun Safety Advocacy Group, Every Town, released a report this week calling for an end to drills that surprise students and the use of firearms and actors as victims to demonstrate possible active shooters in America's schools. In the moment, it's a little nerve-wracking and pretty scary. Unannounced active shooter drills happen at least twice a year at the Neptune, New Jersey High School, where Charlie's Kepler is a freshman. Thank you. We met up with Charlie's and her mom, Beth, at their local Thank coffee you. shop. A lot of schools are conducting these active shooter drills, sadly. How do you feel about them? I feel sad that they're necessary, but as a parent, it makes me feel comfortable that there's something being done and a tool being given to the children who are sitting there vulnerable to feel like they can do something to empower themselves, to protect themselves. The drill at Charlie School last fall sparked immediate controversy in her community and school districts nationwide. No one should ever support doing something just because you feel like, well, we have to do something, so let's do this, when what you're doing could actually cause trauma and fear for those children. Lily Eskelson Garcia is the president of the National Education Association. The NEA wants to end drills where weapons are drawn and actors play roles as victims, sometimes covered with fake blood. One of the things we know is not helpful is to have an active, realistic shooter drill that can frighten, terrorize, traumatize um, the big people and the little people in that school. The NEA also wants to notify teachers, students, and parents in advance of active shooter drills. Alert, alert. Point the drill, this is a drill. In 2018, CBS This Morning aired a live pre-planned shooter drill with a group of Ohio fourth graders. Even with notification and television cameras in their classroom, students revealed how frightening the experience could be. Who here is scared when they go through these drills? Would you want that advance notice? No. 
Why? Because I feel that in that moment that the children are training, I think that they should be thinking and treating it as if it's real, just like a fire drill. Fire drills are expected to be treated as if they're real because it's going to save your life. As for Charlie's, the active shooter drills are not traumatic, they're typical. My generation has grown up with these active shooter drills. We don't see it as something that is so terrifying and as extreme as some of the older generations because it's just kind of like how we've grown up and lived. With the horrible mass shootings taking place weekly in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse as the time of Christ's return draws near? If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962, Engel v. Vital. The removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1963, Abington School District v. Shump. The removal of Bible reading in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1973, Roe v. Wade legalized abortions by the Supreme Court. Since then, there have been over 60 million abortions in the United States. 2013, United States v. Windsor. The Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act. DOMA stated that one man should be married to one woman. DOMA is biblically supported according to Genesis 2.24, which says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 2015, Oberfell v. Hodges the Supreme Court case that ruled in favor of same-sex marriages. Contrary to the Lord's commands, America has made it illegal to teach about God and to pray to Him in public schools. America has made it legal to murder unborn children and has legalized homosexuality in the form of God's sacred institution, marriage. When I was a kid, the only thing we had to worry about was an occasional fire drill. Society has now become so violent that we must conduct active shooter drills Jesus said he would return at a time when violence paralleled the days of Noah. Have we reached that time? One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5-13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. Tonight, the CDC is intensifying the battle against the deadly coronavirus that has infected more than 50,000 people worldwide. More than 1,500 people have died, nearly all of them in China. Carter Evans now on China's drastic measures to stop the outbreak. This is what can happen to people who don't wear masks in the epicenter of the outbreak. As security forces patrol the streets of Wuhan during a total lockdown. For medical personnel, protective gear like suits and masks are in short supply, as is adequate care, 
Hospitals and clinics are overflowing with the sick and dying. In the U.S., the CDC is ramping up its own response to the epidemic by setting up five laboratories around the country where people with flu-like symptoms can now go and be tested for the virus if their flu results are negative. This as scientists around the world race to develop a vaccine. So you're using DNA and genetics to teach the body how to attack the virus. Exactly, and to recognize the virus and then attack it immediately. Inovio Pharmaceuticals in San Diego has already successfully developed vaccines for Ebola and Zika. Dr. Kate Broderick says the coronavirus vaccine they're working on now is showing promise. It's currently being tested in the lab, literally as we speak, and we're manufacturing large-scale quantities of it to get it into human testing by the early summer. Well, UC San Diego Health says it's currently treating two coronavirus patients and another is under investigation. All three of them arrived on that flight from China last week. They were detained, actually not detained, they were under quarantine just up the road at Marine Corps Air Station, Myanmar. Empty streets and an increasingly empty fridge. There are plenty of vegetables, but not much meat for the Wang family's next meal during the coronavirus lockdown. Speaking via video call from Hubei, Wang Xin told us his family was doing its best not to panic. When we get home, we spray disinfection liquid all over our bodies. When we go out, we wear a mask. We don't know if we go out, we come back with a virus stuck on our clothes, so we disinfect every day. He lives in Jingmen, a city neighboring Wuhan, the epicenter of the virus outbreak. For three weeks, the family has been ordered to stay indoors. Movement is increasingly restricted. Once every three days, one family member is allowed to leave the house to pick up groceries. Supplies and produce are limited. Shoppers stand in lines, one meter apart, waiting to enter. It's been almost a month since Wang saw his daughters, who are staying with relatives in southeast China. I feel relieved that my wife and daughters are not in Hubei now. We chat online every day. They're doing okay. Just worry about me. The vast majority of confirmed coronavirus cases, more than 50,000, are in Hubei province. Patients have been sharing videos on social media of life inside makeshift hospitals and quarantine centers. At least 1,700 medical staff are among the infected. Elsewhere in China, people aren't taking any chances. Wang Xin hopes Hubei's leaders will learn their lesson from the outbreak. At the beginning, nobody paid enough attention. Everyone thought it was under control until it was too late. And looks forward to life under lockdown coming to an end. New York may be facing the worst flu season on record. With more than 17,000 new flu cases confirmed just last week, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says nationwide a second wave of flu is hitting the country. And they're urging people to take action. CBS 2's Tony Aiello reports. Northern Westchester Hospital, the flu prevention protocol is in full force. Dozens of people with flu have visited the emergency room. Associate Director Herbert Balsells says so far this month, 17 flu cases were severe enough to require a hospital stay, many with somewhat atypical symptoms. Nausea, diarrhea, abdominal pain, uh, in addition to fever, but not the typical fever, body aches, cough, runny nose. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say a second wave of flu is making for a very nasty season, and it's been particularly tough on children. At this time now, we've already had 92 deaths in the U.S., pediatric deaths. The Westchester Health Commissioner says that's almost triple last year's pediatric death toll for the same period. She says it's important for parents to enforce good hand hygiene and urges everyone to get a flu shot. It's not perfect protection, but remember. People who've had a flu shot may go on to develop the flu, but they're less likely to have the severe complications including death. The state health department says New York has seen almost 107,000 confirmed flu cases so far this season with three flu-associated pediatric deaths. With the chaos and uncertainty growing around the world almost daily, more people than ever should be preparing for the event that will bring about the climax to human history and the restoration of all things. In other words, a new heaven and a new earth, the second coming of Christ. 
Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for not recognizing the signs of his first coming as we read in Matthew 16, 1 through 3. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. The religious leaders of Jesus' day had full knowledge of the prophecies of the Messiah. Yet these religious leaders ignored the signs and still rejected him. If the religious leaders of Jesus' day missed the signs of Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to pay close attention to the signs of Jesus' second coming? One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.